Hey, this is Jen with Status Quo, and I'm here at the YMCA in Vancouver, Canada. And we're in Canada right now because we're covering the, the homelessness problem. Just like in the United States, there is a homelessness crisis. There's a crisis of things to do in the community. So the YMCA is a huge part of, of providing things for the community members to do. This is Kelly, she's Acting Vice President of Communications and Marketing. So kind of talk about what you do and what this YMCA provides to the community in general. Sure. Well, what's most important at the YMCA is that people have a safe place where they can belong. We offer a full suite of programs, including health, fitness, and aquatics programs so that people can pursue their physical and mental health, uh, as well as employment programs, programs for new Canadians, childcare, day camps, overnight camps, and youth leadership development programs. And most kids look forward to it all year long, after a summer or spring break, and it becomes part of their life. I see a lot of the same kids coming back every year. In fact, we do often do photo shoots and I kind of see them grow up from photo shoot to photo shoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it really goes to show you how much they get out of it. Yeah. That's a lot of different um, programs that you provide and it's awesome. And one I want to latch on to is employment programs because one thing that I've noticed and read and heard about from, the, from members of the community just walking around is that jobs are hard to come by and then there are certain jobs that are only attainable for a very select group of people leaving the rest the working middle class without um, a way to go a way to find a job so what does your what does the YMCA provide in, in terms of helping people find employment the YMC provides a number of different employment programs in partnership with federal and provincial governments that provide people with the skills and the support, the social support that they need to find a job and keep a job. Uh, that could include a self-employment program that actually helps people build their own businesses, um, all the way to young people who require employment. And a lot of young people are dealing with anxiety and other mental health issues that really prevent them from taking even that first step towards employment, uh, never mind actually keeping a job if they actually get one. So we found that the employment programs paired with mental health programs can really help reduce that employment barrier. Of course, as we know, employment is such a core underpinning to every form of wellness. If you have income, if you have a place to go every day where you can feel value and have an opportunity to give back to your community and get that sense of work, that improves all aspects of your life. So we have a lot of programs for teens as well, so kids 13 to 18. So our uh, Why Mind Mindfulness programs, we have both a teen and youth mindfulness groups wow. that are for teens that uh, have mild to moderate depression or anxiety and they have a, it's a multi-week program that brings the teens together to learn mindfulness skills, uh, learn ways to cope with day-to-day -day anxiety and depression mm -hmm. and then develop really really positive relationships obviously with the other teens in the programs that are going through the same or similar experiences that they have so this is also a really That's great incredible. spot for those groups to spend some time together and do some meditation and just be outside, but I mean, in a safe all spot. The, all the research on mindfulness and meditation, that's fantastic that you guys have that. And actually, the Why Mind program actually came to be because of an employment program problem. Oh. We found that teens, one of the biggest barriers to employment was the anxiety mm -hmm. or the depression, and we just knew that something had to be done, and there seemed to be a gap. There was a lot of programs for teens with severe mental health issues, but a few less programs for, for teens that had mild to moderate. Um, and it's one of the things with the YMCA is we don't have that clinical setting, so it has a very different feeling. Yeah. And so it seemed like there could be an opportunity to provide a program for teens in that category. So the YMIND program began, and it's been going for about four years now. And so we feel that employment paired with a lot of the other services that we provide health and fitness, mental wellness programs, all of those things together can really promote an overall self sense of well-being. Have you noticed in the last decade or so, because I've, I've read that homelessness and um, people becoming lower income has really just skyrocketed over the last 10 years, so have more and more people been coming in to use those services for employment? 
over that time. Mostly what we find is that regardless of the status of the employment rate, individuals with extra barriers continually struggle to find employment. So there's always a core group of individuals that just have a much more difficult time finding the employment that they need. And so we're there for those people um, and actually meet people where they're at and attempt to really help remove those barriers. And oftentimes that's in partnership with other organizations in the community. The YMCA has hundreds of partnerships with other community programs to make sure that people can get the full suite of support they may need regardless of where their situation is. Well, and as you say, the mental health is a huge part of it. And so this organization providing mental health services as well. Yes. And, uh, you know, speaking to the families that come here, and they have the employment piece, they have the mental health piece, but also behind us is a swimming pool, and, and I know that there are camps and programs. So what kind of role does the YMCA play for children in the community? One of the core things that the YMCA provides to children and families, every, people of all ages, but is our YMCA financial assistance program, which is called our YMCA Strong Kids program, which makes sure that everybody, regardless of their financial background or financial status, has the ability to access YMCA programs. And that's because of donors that believe in what the YMCA does. So through that, every kid can be a part of the YMCA. We offer childcare, licensed childcare and unlicensed childcare, including before and after school programs. Mm -hmm. Childcare is a huge barrier for um, for families in their employment and just having a general sense of well-being in their family day to day. So childcare is a significant component of what we offer families in the Lower Mainland. Then we also offer camps and day camps, which really give kids the chance to be in the great outdoors and develop both positive relationships with their peers, uh, often in an independent way that they don't normally get that chance to do, and then also relationships with uh, mentors and people that they can look up to and learn from. So this is the YMCA Coast Capital Savings Child and Family Development Center. Oftentimes families that live downtown live in really, really small apartments and they don't have that much space for toys and just to have some social time. So this is a big open space and this wall actually moves aside so that you kind of have a second living room that's right here. Cool. Yeah, I was gonna say, it looks just like a living room. Exactly, that's the whole point. And obviously it's also a great opportunity for parents to meet one another yeah. at the same stage of life that you might otherwise not get the chance to meet. I think a core part of what kids get at the YMCA is fun and safety. We hear time and time again that kids just love coming to the YMCA, whether that's camp, childcare, coming to one of our health and fitness programs. Uh, you can't have fun unless you feel safe. And so those two things together, I think, are a significant part of what we offer to families. And quite honestly, for the parents, sometimes it's just the kids get physical activity and they get tired <laughs> and they go yeah. home and they're ready for bed. So yeah, there's, a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of benefits to actually coming and being part of the Y. What do you think, even with all the things that you do, seeing homelessness on the rise, seeing people losing their jobs, what do you see the, the wise role in the future? Um, do, do you plan to expand programs? Are you looking to different ways to pull in those who might not know what the Y has to offer? Right now, we are in the process of building four new centers of community in Vancouver, Chilliwack, Coquitlam, and Surrey. And we find that our centers of community that offer a full suite of services are a really easy way for people of varying backgrounds to walk into a center like this, a safe place where they can feel included regardless of who they are. And so that's why we're going to new communities and actually trying to reach underserved areas so that people can come here. We're not, we're not, um, we're not a clinical setting like a mm -hmm. hospital. Um, we're quite a neutral space for people to come and be themselves. And because we have such a large program and service offering, we really can meet people where they're at. That doesn't mean we're necessarily for everyone, but we certainly can come alongside a large group of people, um, especially in that time where, whether it's actually they're in a state of crisis, um, oftentimes, especially in our childcare centers, mm -hmm. families can be in a state of crisis. And the YMCA isn't there just to provide childcare, but we're also there to help parents 
do the most, the hardest and most important job in the world. Um, so that could be homelessness. That could be losing their job. So we're there for them in that way. Uh, and then we're also there for prevention. So whether that might be coming to the YMCA so that you can be healthy, so that when a crisis does hit, you're, you feel prepared and you feel strong and you already have a community of support that you can draw upon and lean on when something bad happens. Driving around the United States, you see YMCA's shut down, closed down, leaving that gap in the community. So what would you say about the importance of having a community center like this, of having a YMCA like this um, in communities, so pulling, helping pull kids out of poverty or helping them give them things to do? What is the role? Why is it so important to invest in things like the YMCA? One of the things that we find at the YMCA is these buildings uh, are really, really important because they aren't what the YMCA actually is but they are the tool that gives us the ability to be a part of people's lives. So when you have centers of community like this, it draws people in. It actually, we find that, you know, even the simplest component of, you know, the lights being on in, the, in a particular neighborhood at night or throughout the night and having activity can help reduce crime in a particular area. So it's a really interesting dichotomy where the YMCA is about our programs and services, and yet the buildings have to be here in order to make that happen. And that's one of the things that often can get missed is a lot of donors um, want to give directly to programs and are reticent to give to actual physical spaces. And yet you can't have the programs and services without the spaces and the safe places for people to be. And one of the things that's really amazing about the YMCA is that we're a charity. So we have a different model that allows communities to make donations and actually become partners with the YMCA so that their community can be safe. So a lot of people feel like they can't afford something that would be so helpful. They can't afford childcare, they can't afford a gym membership, they can't afford really to live. So what about those people? Can the YMCA help them? We have financial assistance because we're a charity and people donate so that people just like those that you describe can get rid of those barriers right out of the gate. So I really encourage people, regardless of their status, to come into the YMCA and ask about our financial assistance program. It's really, really easy, um, it's confidential, it's a short application process, and we wanna get that barrier out of the way as soon as possible so that people can get connected to their Y and connected to a program that would help. And then more importantly, get connected to other people that could be on the same journey as them, as well as other people that are not and um, can really help out. One of the things that we also find is that people who do have a home, um, they may also be facing significant economic pressure for any number of reasons. So we really find that the pressure financially can impact everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't necessarily have to look like you need financial help to be someone who really needs financial help. Yeah. So we just really encourage people that regardless of who they are, come and talk to us. We would love to help you out. That's great. Yeah. Out front tonight, chaos at the White House. President Trump's deputy chief of staff, his communications director, is... Just because of their connection to President Trump, and I know you've been saying... We learned recently that Donald Trump threatened to sue his former schools if... Tired of hearing about Trump 24-7? Become a member at statuscoup.com for only $10 a month. Click the notification. With your help, we can start the media revolution. And, uh, before Bernie went on stage, I spoke with... His supporters online here, uh, and you really get that feeling. From